the U.S. military trained him in explosives and battlefield tactics. Now the Army veteran and enlisted National Guard member was calling for taking up arms against police and government officials in his own country. Chris Arthur, who served two tours in Iraq before joining the North Carolina National Guard, warned about a coming civil war. Videos he posted publicly on YouTube bore titles such as, The End of America or The Next Revolutionary War. In his telling, the US was falling into chaos and there would be only one way to survive, kill or be killed. He left the National Guard in 2019 to focus full-time on Tackleberry Solutions, his military tactics business where he sold access to this deadly expertise. Arthur was posting during a surge of far-right extremism in the years leading up to the January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol. He wrote Warcraft training manuals to help others organize their own militias. And he offered sessions at his farm in Mount Olive, North Carolina, that taught how to kidnap and attack public officials, use snipers and explosives and design a fatal funnel booby trap to inflict mass casualties. While he continued to post publicly, military and law enforcement ignored more than a dozen warnings phoned in by Arthur's wife's ex-husband about Arthur's increasingly violent rhetoric and calls for the murder of police officers. This failure by the Guard, FBI and others to act allowed Arthur to continue to manufacture and store explosives around young children and train another extremist who would attack police officers in New York State and lead them on a wild, two-hour chase and gun battle. Arthur isn't an anomaly. He is among more than 480 people with a military background accused of ideologically driven, extremist crimes from 2017 through 2023, including the more than 230 arrested in connection with the January 6 insurrection. When I came home, I realized that I no longer knew who the good guys were and who the bad guys were. And I realized that we were that much closer to where we were going to be an inevitable war. Start. Is this something that you want to have for, say, a small LR militia? Yes, absolutely. Take the bad guy out through a snatch and grab, hold him accountable, have him publicly tried, and then have him executed. The big key characteristic of plots with folks with military backgrounds is they tend to veer towards the extreme violence end of the spectrum. So what we have found is that this is primarily a problem in the veteran community, not the active service community. My thumb is pointing and I'm just punching out and I'm engaging. The internet really is the marketplace where these ideas are exchanged. Blessed be our way El Shaddai. My soul is magnified, the Yahweh of hosts. I got the impression that he was really concerned about the future of our country, but his focus was China and Russia. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! My husband took one look at him and was like, look, you're not a soldier. I can't teach you to do any of that stuff that you're... I can teach you how to unite your community if China and Russia come. I can show you, like if you've got a war going on, I can show you how to unite your community and keep people alive. Can you advise all units to use caution? Oh, shots are firing.
we can go lethal or non-lethal and that depends on you there's so many different things you can do that it's not i mean the, the sky's the limit the biggest thing i'm trying to get you guys to do with those books is start to think mm -hmm. think outside the box so if you can take your environment and just develop the battlefield out of it yeah and that's what we're going to help you do today we had our disclaimer that he had to abide by before we would even talk to him which which clearly said in our disclaimer that you weren't going to use this knowledge to hurt anybody and that included federal agents and that was in our disclaimer i think that was when he was in iraq there was a lot of stuff that he did that was classified but you're dealing with a bunch of freaking kids now that are working as cops and they don't have a damn clue what war really looks like at some point that's going to happen and you're going to have to take those dudes out. I work for Department of Defense. That's kind of what I'm supposed to do is, is report if there's issues, um, especially if it's an inside threat. We called the ATF, we called the FBI, we started making contact with everybody. Um, I had even called his military command and, and let them know. You know, you guys need to do something before somebody gets hurt. He's talking about killing cops. He's talking about killing the FBI. Twenty seventeen, of course, is, is probably most famously known as the the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, which which turned deadly. Um, that seems to be the year where um, these groups and movements seem to be emboldened um, by uh, especially the rhetoric of the former president, and they started to become more active. And so we not only see an increase in cases of, of individuals with links to the military, we just see an overall increase uh, in twenty seventeen that has continued to this day. All signs point to that after the working group provided the recommendations that things kind of stalled and sputtered out a bit. I feel like we're being used as a stepping stone to go after more people. We're a small business focused on helping people defend their homes. Literally, that was what our goal was. 